All right there, everyone. Alex Jones is storming the halls of Congress in Washington, D.C. and confronting his accusers, causing many of them to run away. That's what we'll be talking about on today's video. A very, very warm welcome to all of our new viewers. We average about 10,000 new subscribers a month, so I cannot thank you enough for being here. I post two videos a day that analyze current events and light of conservative trends, and now you can help support that in four ways. First, by clicking on that Patreon and PayPal link below and becoming a regular or one-time supporter. By taking advantage of our book deal, where you can get my book, Classical versus Modern Education, for only 99 cents at the link below as an ebook download. A third by taking advantage of our promotion at the Pro Trump New Balance sneakers by clicking the affiliate link below and sticking it to the Nike Corporation for promoting Colin Kaepernick. And of course, as always, by hitting that bell and subscribe button, it is an absolute privilege to have you as a part of this channel. Well, he certainly has guts, that's for sure. Alex Jones of InfoWars has been storming the halls of Congress, confronting those who have accused him of hate speech and inciting violence, racism, xenophobia, and the like. And he's been confronting members of Congress, members of the media, uh, big tech CEOs, challenging them to honor the First Amendment and the freedom of speech and to make them defend their accusations against him. You can see Alex uh, confronting the liberal Oregon Senator Ron Wyden, who absolutely runs away. And he takes on Marco Rubio, who claimed not to know who he was. He confronted Oliver Darcy of CNN, who's been advocating the banning of conservative websites from the internet, Darcy just scurries away in the face of Alex's confrontation. And of course, perhaps the climax of it all was Alex's confrontation with Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, who was summoned to uh, Capitol Hill for hearings on internet censorship, of which, of course, Alex Jones was a victim, and that's why he was there in the first place. Now, I think what Jones is doing here is awesome. I mean, I think it is so good, and I think it's so good because of the important significance of confrontation in the process of social change, the kind of social change that is moving our nation in a thoroughly conservative direction. As much as we may not like confrontation, it does serve a very important indispensable purpose in the process of social change. And so I think we have to see what Alex Jones is doing in light of the larger picture of what's going on right now in Washington, D.C., and the profound changes that are taking place in the midst of Donald Trump's presidential leadership there. To put this in a bit of a uh, historical perspective, I don't know if you're familiar with the world of classical rhetoric in the ancient Greek world, right? But in the world of the great classical rhetoricians, there was, there was in fact, the use of a speech form known as vituperation, which often employed forms of taunting and verbal confrontation and attacking a person or thing for being vicious or evil. We actually see something akin to this in the Bible, right? Think of the way David taunts Goliath or the way Elijah taunts the prophets of Baal or Jesus calling the scribes and Pharisees fools and hypocrites and blind guides. What binds all of this together, which I think is key here, what binds it is the, the way these different uses of taunt and confrontation convey the notion of advers, adversary. Confronting and taunting are always ways in which one speaks to one's opponent or combatant or partisan. And herein lies, I believe, the logic behind Alex Jones's actions on Capitol Hill. I think this underscores the logic of President Trump's tweets. I think they both know exactly what they're doing. Both President Trump and Alex Jones recognize that they are in an adversarial relationship with what Trump has effectively branded as the swamp, the D.C. elite establishment. They know they're in a battle with the corporatist globalist status quo represented by both political parties, right? We, we can never forget that Donald Trump is a third party candidate that won the Republican nomination, okay? Trump is a third party candidate that won the Republican nomination. Both political parties, Republican and Democrat, 
are all for open borders and unfettered immigration and globalist trade policies that deindustrialize America's heartland. They're all for politically correct values that are redefining American culture. Alex Jones and Donald Trump know that in advocating a nationalist populist America first agenda, the Washington establishment and the corporatist globalist media, which is simply the mouthpiece for that establishment, are going to come after them with everything they've got. So if you think it through, what Alex Jones is doing on Capitol Hill is precisely the kind of thing that Trump is doing. Both are confronting their adversaries. They are taunting ridiculing, mocking their political opponents, challenging them as a word, openly defend their anti-First Amendment, anti-free speech censorship, and in so doing, they're accomplishing two things. On the one hand, they're both, they're weakening the credibility of the politicians and big tech CEOs and news media that want to silence them. They weaken their credibility by everyone getting to see them run away and hide when actually challenged to defend their positions. But then also at the same time, you have Jones and Trump absolutely firing up conservatives and nationalist populists all over the nation like no one ever has. Both Alex Jones and Donald Trump are confronting what they have branded as the enemies of the American people. They are openly confronting them, causing them to scurry away, and in so doing, they are crushing their credibility on the one hand and firing up their conservative base on the other. It's, uh, it's brilliant, brilliant strategy. And so bravo to Alex Jones in his confrontations of his accusers in Congress and these big tech CEOs and the corporatist globalist media elite this is how you take care of the swap, this corporatist globalist cesspool, by making them face up to the very social media personalities that they want to ban. And in so doing, we get to watch them run away and hide from any such confrontation. That is how you handle the swamp. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on our Patreon and PayPal links below where you can become a supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in line of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.